Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo. You know, today I'm sitting here, it's Friday, and every muscle in my body aches, and I am just exhausted, but I am smiling ear to ear. I just got back from Citizen Con. Well, I did at about 6 o'clock last night, and the last thing I remember is sitting down on my couch, TV being on, and a bowl of homemade mac and cheese, and a beer being given to me. And then I woke up at like 8.50 in the morning, and I had to get back to work on my schoolwork. I did take today off as a recovery day, but I needed to start thinking about what the hell just happened. And let me elaborate on that. I just got back from the most amazing four days that I've ever had working my butt off, ever. I worked with 50 volunteers that helped to set up, run, and break down CitizenCon 2948. These people are the most amazing people that I've ever worked with, become friends with, built relationships with, had to be around for 12 to 14 hours a day with 20 hours on the last day. They were amazing. Great group of people. And they worked hard. And I don't think anybody that hasn't been a volunteer at a con could understand how hard. I was given the opportunity to run the largest team, the registration team. We were responsible for scanning tickets, for handing out badges and swag. We were responsible for maintaining the queues throughout the day at the different events that were scheduled. But we were also responsible for building quite a number of all of the giveaway items and stowing them and sorting them and getting them all in place when it was time to start the convention. So we had to make 2,000 poster rolls, 2,000 of the lanyards with the registration card holders, and 2,000 of the different swag bags. But the hardest thing that my team had to do was to make Big Benny's boxes. Now this was important because it was a Big Benny's truck. You really have to see it to believe it. This was the most difficult task that we had, but not the most strenuous. Here's my team right now. Well, this is only one table. There were many tables throughout two days trying to make these. Now, very quickly we made the bags. Very quickly we made the posters. Very quickly we made the lanyards. But it took forever to make these boxes. And they had to do it while wearing gloves. If a glove ripped, they had to go wash the hands, put another glove on, and make the boxes. Everybody that took part in this, in fact, all of the, pretty much all of the different volunteers did, is going to get a form badge. The form badge will be Big Benny's Box Builder. And it's only available to the people that actually worked the conference and made the boxes. Pretty amazing, but it was difficult. Nonetheless, my team was amazing, and I am honored and proud and humbled by all of them. They are so amazing. Each and every one of them performed of them above and beyond any thing that they really had to do. And we gave a lot to this. We weren't able to see the different events because we had to work them. So a lot of what went on in, at the conference, you got to see the finished product, and we didn't. In fact, I didn't get to see this in its entirety and hear it in its entirety until last night. And this is the presentation, the mission that Chris Roberts went through. In fact, it gets even worse. We were backstage getting ready to be called on stage to be honored for everything that we did in the last in the closing notes, in the closing presentation, so we didn't really see the amazing Squadron 42 vertical slice. But even so, it was an experience that every one of us loved and would gladly do over and over and over and over again. So let me tell you, my interest in CIG has never waned. My support of CIG has never waned. 
My belief that the game would be built has never waned. But my excitement did. And in that final presentation, when we were showed the roadmap, the path to release, my excitement was rekindled. And it's not because there was anything earth-shattering that we didn't already know. It's that they finally put on paper, without dates, the things that were needed to get done. Now, I want to say this. OCS was one of the most important things that they've worked on up until now. And they thought it was going to take six months, and it took, eight, and it took 18. So all of the things that are left on the list can go through the same development phase, development cycle that OCS did. But coming home and passing out and waking up and installing 3.0 and seeing frame rates at 3440 by 1440 in the 60s, that's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Now, I could be quite boisterous, quite negative when it comes to ship sales because I always believe that ship sales are something that we really need to cut down on because they take people's they take people into a direction of talking about how the game is just about buying ships and not about what is in the game for the first time ever they released a ship that you could buy right away that type of ship sale I'll always support always and seeing the Valkyrie for the first time, we didn't get to see it fly or in any other way. In fact, the Valkyrie was a top secret ship and they really wanted to keep it from us. And then they made us roll posters and stuff, brochures. And within three tenths of a second, every one of us had seen the Valkyrie, had read about it. And that wonderful reveal, that wonderful secret surprise was ripped from us. But the excitement of hearing that it was ready to fly made each and every one of us turn to each other and go, holy crap, <laughs> they did it. I am so happy that CIG is starting to make ships that are coming right out. But there's a caveat to this one, a caveat that might mean that this isn't something that is going to happen often in the future. The caveat is... This ship is specifically for Squadron 42. Well, you can fly it now, but it was made for Squadron 42 and, of course, given to us to use in the real world. That's a drop ship. We don't know what its storage capabilities are, but I'm assuming like the 600, if you leave your rover behind, you'll have some room to put some storage in there. So maybe we can move things around. But this is a dedicated drop ship. It's a dedicated... Oh my God, here come the Marines and everybody runs because, you know, Marines. This is a dedicated vessel to bring Marines ashore, to bring your troops, to bring pirates, to bring mercenaries, to bring bounty hunters, to bring, you know, UEE troops, to bring advocacy, whatever it might be. It's to bring troops down to the ground, right? To return the warriors to Valhalla. And that means maybe, just maybe, it doesn't have a lot of use in the game for us. Or maybe it does, since we don't know what gameplay elements still await us down the line. Nonetheless, the Valkyrie coming out so quickly was unexpected and delightful. The Kraken, we got to see it every day as they were putting together the model of the Kraken. I think it was somewhere between 128 scale and 172 scale. I think it was 172 scale. And the Kraken, just incredible. I didn't know it was going to have so many weapons on it. And that's a way that we all can bring our organizations and the ability to project power into different systems immediately with these ships. I mean, I envision four Carracks, a couple of Javelins, about five or six Idrises. Oh my God, that's a big, huge amount of people in one area. And I wonder if they're going to be able to do it. Well, that would be awesome if they could. 
So I have a couple of things that really turned my head a couple of times. And one of those was how amazingly cordial, open, and um, how impressive the CIG staff is. You know, there's a lot of people that, that will look at their supporters, that will look at their backers, that will look at their fans and kind of look down at them. Like they're kind of a nuisance that comes with the, you know, comes with fame, comes with the job. So Brian Chambers everywhere I turned when I was, um, when I was there, when I was at the Long Center setting up on both Tuesday and Wednesday, even on Monday. And every time I saw him, it was always a cordial conversation, always a wonderful conversation. In fact, I've talked to Brian quite a bit, so that's kind of one that I'll let go. I've never interviewed or talked to Eric. Again, Eric Karen Davis, wonderful, wonderful person. Josh Coons had him online, was joking with him, and that was wonderful. And I just look at this and see how much they really are thankful to us. And, of course, you know, Jay Lee, Jeremiah Lee. We have these wonderful outfits and a lot more from his team. And interactions with him are always amazing. And I love being part of that crew. I guess what I'm saying is I love being a volunteer at these things because we get to see things that the rest of you don't. We get to hear things that the rest of you don't. So I need to move on to something as I close this out. This is just a recap of my time there. And I want to thank each and every one of the people I worked with, both volunteer staff, CIG staff, and the amazing people that work for the Long Center for a wonderful week or four days of being at CitizenCon 2948. Now I'm going to go into something that I overheard. Something that came along, came from one of the tasks that we take care of when we're working at CitizenCon. If you follow me, you'll know there's two things that I'm very anxious for. First thing, of course, is a female model, and we're going to jump all over that because we all know it's coming in 3.4. The second thing is Squadron 42. In 2016, I left CitizenCon, then a volunteer that was taking part in a much smaller group, then a volunteer that worked hard, but not as hard, not, nowhere near as hard as I did this time. But I left that citizen con feeling kind of jilted, feeling kind of let down. And I believe that's really where I started to lose energy. I bought my Polaris, but I didn't get that vertical slice from Squadron 42. And we have seen a couple of things since then, but there was no clear path to Squadron 42. As Chris Roberts ended the night's events, he said, the last technical hurdle had been leaped, had been crossed, and that was OCS. That there were no technical hurdles standing in the way of Squadron 42, leading to an assumption that it wouldn't be too long before Squadron 42 came out. And then at the end of the night, as the signing table was coming to a close, I escorted Sandy to and from the bathroom so she didn't get overwhelmed by people asking her questions so she could get back to the table as quickly as she could to take care of the signing process so she could take part in it. We were interrupted by a wonderful backer that asked a question about when Citizen Kong was going to be next year. And of course she answered the only way she could. Well, it was going to be right around the same time because they try to do it around the 10th of October every year. And then she said, but there'll be two events next year. One in October for CitizenCon and one in December for Squadron 42. I looked at her and said, should you have said that? And she said, yes, it's all right. And I looked at her and said, wow, that's pretty awesome news. Now, I don't know what that means. She didn't tell me what that means. She didn't say it's exactly what I'm about ready to muse with you. Does that mean that next December, December of 2019, that event for Squadron 42 is a launch party, an announcement party, or is it the wrap party? I don't know. It's 
got to be one of those, right? So I'm pretty excited. I'm more than pretty excited. I'm downright flabber. I'm, I'm beside myself. And I've been just thinking about those words that came out of her mouth ever since. So I'm extremely excited and hyped again for Star Citizen and especially Squadron 42. And I hope you join me in my excitement over the next year. But there's one last thing. Sophie Girl and Eden Star were both at CitizenCon. Thank you so much, ladies, for the wonderful reunion that we shared for the two minutes of time I had for us. But Sophie Girl and Eden Star showed interest in getting the show back together again. And I hope that does come to fruition. But there will be needed a little bit more coaxing from y'all. If you want us to get back together again, please make some wonderful comments below. And maybe that will be enough to push my girlfriends over the top, across the fence, down into a ditch, <laughs> whatever it might be, and give us the uh, strength, fortitude, desire to come back and do light speed lunatics. So thank you so much for watching and for commenting on my videos. I say that every time and you know the drill. Click the thumbs up button if you like the show. Please make sure to comment below. And if you really want to help out the channel, I don't beg, but I do offer that there are going to be some benefits to being a patron over at p-a-t-r-e-o-n patreon.com forward slash backgirl. Trying to come up with new rewards. And believe me, they'll get good this year because there's a lot going on and I'm going to spend a lot more time in the game. Folks, thanks again. And I'm going to leave you with this wonderful Kraken video as I go and sit down and watch the presentation yet again. I'm really sold. Yeah, I know there's not a lot of gameplay. Yeah, I know it still has some time. But just seeing where it's going, just knowing it's real, just knowing it's coming, is enough for me. I hope it's enough for you. And with that said, you all be safe out there. Release the Kraken. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. In this age of uncertainty, it's time to take back your strength. It's time to release the Kraken. Drake Interplanetary, we got your back.